Electricity. It keeps us safe, secure, and comfortable while we sleep. It wakes us in the morning and energizes our days at work and at home. Under normal operating conditions, our electricity delivery system is extremely safe and reliable. But when a storm or motor vehicle accident damages our electrical delivery system, even when built-in system protection devices operate as they should, we should all be on alert. In a matter of moments, a system that was extremely safe can become life-threatening. When responding to an emergency that may involve electrical facilities, just as in the case with any emergency, don't become part of the problem. Remember, survey the scene for possible electrical hazards, particularly down power lines. If you identify or even suspect such hazards, contact the local utility company immediately. Always assume all power lines are energized. Even lines that appear dead can be deadly. Never attempt to move a down power line. Never cut a service wire that supplies electricity to a home or business, and never remove an electric meter. Secure the area to protect yourself and the public. Keep your distance from any suspected electrical hazards. Also, keep yourself and your equipment at least 10 feet from power lines. That includes service lines entering a building. When entering a structure, be alert for electrical hazards. Before we discuss some of the hazards that can occur when our electricity system is damaged, let's touch on some of the characteristics of electricity. Our live line demonstration illustrates the properties of conductors and insulators and provides clear evidence of the possible hazards of electricity. Hazards you will often encounter in responding to emergencies. The setup for this demonstration consists of a scaled down electricity delivery system utility poles, power lines, and a pole-mounted transformer like you see along streets and roads. This demonstration system operates at 7,200 volts. Our motto here at rg &E is stay clear, stay alive. Any power line or any line that's on the ground is to be considered hot, live, and dangerous. We're going to be going through uh, some different demonstrations here, showing you uh, what the potential can be and the dangers of uh, electricity. To ensure the safety of our line mechanics, a member of the team will control when the demonstration system is energized and when it is not. Our system is designed to sense short circuits, sudden demand for unusual amounts of electricity. If a power line falls on a poor conductor, for example, the system protections may not function as designed, allowing the line to remain energized. Always treat down wires as being energized. Any line that's on the ground is to be considered dangerous. The cable TV could be on our primary line and doesn't look to be burning right away. Sometimes, once you move the wire, you will see the arc. 90% of outside power lines are not insulated. No line is safe to touch ever. So we got Rocky the squirrel. It's a wooden squirrel. Uh, but we have a wire run on the back of the squirrel. The reason we ran that wire just represents the internal organs and, and being conductive just like us humans would be. We're made up of 70% of water and also of salts, so that makes the squirrel a good conductor, just like us. Like being a bird on the wire, if he's lucky enough, he's on the conductor, but as soon as he creates a path to ground, you will find that it can uh, cause an outage and can also cause problems. Now the fuse blew because the squirrel made contact to the ground, which could cause an outage. An energized wire often makes no noise and doesn't spark, leaving the impression that it is de-energized. Always treat down wires as being energized. Lots of time we get the question, if a power line is down, how close can I get to it? So here we're going to show you that 7200 volts can travel through the earth enough to light up this house. And we're going to simulate the power line falling down onto the ground by him taking the shock on the insulated stick and putting it down to the grounded box, which would represent the earth. Now this is what's supposed to happen when a conductor goes to the ground through our protective fusing and relaying at substation. But this may only happen two-thirds of the time. 
So therefore, we consider all conductors that are on the ground hot, live, and dangerous. Now, a lot of people wonder when their power is out, they see us driving around and drive by the house. We have to make sure that power lines are all clear from trees before we re-energize. If we were just to go to a fuse point and were to close it without patrolling, this is what could possibly happen. The molecules in wood are far apart, so it becomes difficult for electricity to jump from molecule to molecule. The higher the voltage, the easier it is for electricity to move through wood. And if the wood is damp, it changes the equation, and wood becomes a good conductor, even at low voltage. Voltage is the pressure that pushes electricity along, like water through a hose. Amperage, or current, is what kills. It takes less than one quarter of one amp, the amount used by a 25 watt light bulb, to put a heart into irregular beating. When you come to an emergency situation that you don't rush just out before taking a good assessment, if you were to drag the fire hose across the energized area, not only the person dragging the fire hose could be in trouble, but also any personnel that is near or on the fire engine. Here we're gonna show you the uh, fireman's boot may have been compromised right out of the box. And this firefighter would just be able to step on the energized earth. He's not even stepping on the line. He is stepping on the earth that's energized by the conductor. The hot dog pretty much represents flesh of a finger. First responders during house fires or anything like that, please don't cut any entrance cables. This is what could happen. A lot of uh, utilities have gone, been installed underground and uh, before you do any excavation, it's a free service. You can get your utilities staked out, meaning gas, phone, cable TV, and obviously electric. Uh, Safety is at stake. If you were just to go ahead and dig someplace, you could come in contact with a primary or even a secondary line, and this is what could happen. please do not use any ladders near our power lines because electricity travels at the speed of light. As soon as you make contact with this primary conductor, you could be in a lot of trouble. A pad mounted transformer is the same as a pole mounted one, except it has an enclosure and uses lines from the underground to feed homes and to step down the voltage from a high voltage down to a low voltage that's usable. Uh, we would like people to treat them with respect. Uh, if they're vandalized or broken or something like that, please call because this is what could happen if somebody came in contact, if somebody were to reach their hands into a pad mounted transformer. If you get to an emergency situation where there is a piece of rope or twine or kite, that has made contact with our power lines, don't touch it. Because we're gonna show you that 7,200 volts can travel through that cotton kite string and enough voltage will go through to light up the house at 120, 240 volts. On rare occasions, most often as a result of a motor vehicle accident, a power line comes down on an occupied vehicle. The first thing to remember is to stay away from the energized vehicle. And unless there is imminent danger such as fire, instruct the occupants of the vehicle to stay put until the utility crew arrives to make the situation safe. Everything's okay folks, stay in the car. Help if there is imminent danger, instruct the occupants to jump clear of the vehicle without touching the vehicle and the ground at the same time. Then they need to shuffle away from the vehicle, keeping both feet on the ground to avoid electrical shock. It's a safe haven when a live wire falls on it, but that's because electricity always seeks the easiest path to ground. In this case, on the outside of the vehicle, 
through the tires, and into the ground. When responding to an emergency that may involve electrical facilities, don't become part of the problem. Remember, as a rule, first responders should stay back as far as possible. Survey the scene for possible electrical hazards, particularly down power lines. If you identify or even suspect such hazards, contact the local utility company immediately. Always assume all power lines are energized. Even lines that appear dead can be deadly. Never attempt to move a down power line. Never cut a service wire that supplies electricity to a home or business and never remove an electric meter. Secure the area to protect yourself and the public. Keep your distance from any suspected electrical hazards. Also, keep yourself and your equipment at least 10 feet from power lines. That includes service lines entering a building. The biggest thing that I can tell you as far as a first responder is you're gonna to have to keep your awareness to a heightened level so to keep yourself safe. Be aware of, your, of the surroundings. Don't park underneath wires and poles during a pole hit or during storms because you don't know when something is gonna give out and you don't wanna have a line coming down on vehicles and personnel. And also just keep the public safe, keep people away from the uh, dangers. And just that big picture and, and what we always say here is stay clear, stay alive. For more information on electricity and responding to electrical emergencies, please visit AEGISLink.com. For information on responding to natural gas emergencies, please visit NYSEG.com or RGE.com.